Five, four, three. Yes, welcome to the Creator Series. In this Creator Series interview, we're going to meet a very unique musician who has continued to create music while traveling the country and really puts the mobile in mobile recording. Uh, his most recent album, Awakenings, is in fact recorded in his RV and has gone on to receive some critical acclaim, including a runner-up for the best flute album by One World Radio. Please welcome to Studio Live today, for the first time, Mr. Rand. Andy Wind Talker Motes. How are you doing today, Randy? Okay, Pete, how are you? Uh, I'm exceptionally well. Thanks so much for being here. It's uh, great to talk to you finally. We've been in touch and corresponding for over a year, I think, now around right. music and garage band and all sorts of things. And it's the first time we've actually chatted. It was about 10 minutes ago while we were setting up. So yeah, this wonderful was, to meet this you. Lost. This is uh, awesome. Let, let's kick things off. So uh, for those that have watched the Creator Series before, the first question I always ask is your musical origin story. So what got you to here? What's your musical background? And let folks know a little bit about the uh, the Wind Talker story so far. Okay. Well, I started actually in elementary school uh, in the school band. I wanted to play drums because I wanted to play the loudest instrument in the band. But they already had enough drummers, so I took trombone instead. Wow. And... Um, Played trombone for in elementary school for until I moved up to high school. Uh, never did learn how to read music fast enough to be able to play it uh, from the written page. So I memorized everything. Uh, and that has sort of served me well over the years because everything I do is memorized. I still can't read music fast enough to, to play it. Yeah. And then, of course, when I got to high school, you know, we had the Beatles and the whole, you know, rock thing was going. So taught myself to play guitar and then was in some bands where they needed a bass player. So I taught myself how to play bass. And then a lot of years passed and I was still into music. I was doing live sound and, you know, recording, uh, recording engineering and that type of thing. Um, but discovered the Native American style flute, mm. uh, went to a concert uh, by a gentleman by the name of Robert Mirabal, who blended Native American flute with a rock band oh, wow. and put on this fantastic concert called Music from a Painted Cave. And I fell in love with the music and my wife bought me a couple of flutes uh, as a surprise and after I told her this is the next instrument I want to learn how to play so I taught myself how to play flute and did take some lessons you know once I sort of plateaued with my skills so I took mm. lessons from some other accomplished players and then because I was working in a recording studio at the time I had some chops with recording but I recorded my first album at home in my home studio uh, using Cakewalk Sonar. Yeah, nice. And yeah, for those of you who remember that, yeah, yeah, that behemoth. <laughs> yes. And, um, you know, then as the time went on, I, you know, needed to learn how to play keyboards so I could do synthesized instruments. So I took piano lessons and a music theory class so I could learn how to play keyboards and synthesize all of the instruments because I was really into orchestral type music. Mm. And so things sort of progressed and evolved from there. And, you know, I went from doing one album that took me two years to finish because I was playing all the instruments up to the current one, which took me about five months to, to finish, including learning how to use GarageBand to, to record it. Yeah. Uh, but that's pretty much, you know, the uh, thumbnail yeah. sketch, my yeah. elevator elevator speech on my musical career. Right. It, it is always challenging, I know, but when I say to folks, oh, yeah, just tell us about your, your musical background. And for those of us that have had a lot of experience, and for you jumping from, from drums through trombone, through bass, and then into a Native American flute, that's quite a diverse and eclectic range of, of instruments and, uh, and quite, a, quite some changes over there. So, uh, so these days, a lot of your music is very much centered around the Native American flute. It's obviously something that you really, you really love and have, have really spent a lot of time with and, and really enjoy playing. Yeah, just about all of my music is Native American flute music uh, of some style, whether it's jazz or blues or symphonic orchestra, uh, that type of thing. Um, 
And, you know, I do live performances, have been doing live performances called the Wind Talker Experience since uh, 2011. And so it's because it's such a unique style of music. Uh, once I get my foot in the door, it becomes accepted very quickly. And, you know, venues now have a unique artist. <laughs> excuse me, unique artists with unique style of music, which is different from, you know, most of the other people that they have coming in. <clears throat> yeah, totally. Um, and yeah, it, it is amazing. I just, I just showed on the screen there, by the way, if you do want to follow, uh, follow Randy's music, uh, Wind Talker Music, there's links down in the description. So do jump down there and, uh, and follow Randy on YouTube. Uh, because I was just, uh, I always do this, like just before the show, I was sitting here and I'm having a coffee and I'm sitting back. I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm going to listen to some of Randy's music. And I went onto YouTube and I was digging around and trying to find all of the different songs from your recent album because created in Garage Band is obviously something that I'm very interested in because that's kind of my bread and butter and then you mentioned to me oh yeah i've got a playlist of the whole album so uh yeah that's that's what we've got here you've got uh, a whole playlist there of uh, your album awakening and uh, we'll definitely be talking about that uh, as we continue on here so uh that looks uh, really cool um so tell us a little bit more in terms of your name and, and where that came from and the origin of that. Because obviously creating music and Native American flute and then having the name Wind Talker, I just assumed you were a Native American uh, when I first started chatting to you. Uh, and it turns out that's not, not exactly the case. So, uh, yeah, talk, talk us through that. I have to check something here, Pete. I've got sure. a message that my battery is going low in my computer, which is a little odd since I'm plugged in. Oh, wow. Um, Might so need some, I don't... Uh, some power, cha power yeah, changes. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes my technical person. So I'll continue say, yeah, while, while my wife checks out <laughs> the electrical stuff. So <clears throat> the name Wind Talker uh, actually is a name that I used as a trail name in 2006 when my wife and I uh, through hiked the Appalachian Trail from Georgia to Maine. Yep. So it, we, it start, took us six months. And I carried a Native American flute with me uh, while we were hiking. Mm -hmm. And I would play in camp and stuff at night. And because of a lifelong uh, fascination, and I guess you could call it passion, that I've had for Native American culture and history, uh, I gave myself the trail name of Wind Talker, which is something unique to the Appalachian Trail that all the hikers use a name other than their real name. Yeah, so that's where the name Wind Talker came from. And when I started performing and recording, I decided, well, that would be a good stage name. And so that's where the Wind Talker comes from. Got it. Yeah, no, that, that, that makes sense. And uh, I, I was saying to Randy at the start of the interview, I'm like, uh, I never quite know when someone has a artist name, I'm never quite sure whether to call them uh, their artist name or their actual name. And I'm like, uh, so Wind Talker always sounds a bit strange. But yeah, it is uh, it, it is very cool uh, to, to find sort of the origin story of that and to, to pick that name. Uh, all, all good there? How, how are we going with the power setup? I think we're I think we're okay. So you, you just, it's just like live music, Randy. You'd always need a talented roadie to be there with you that knows the tech that comes and solves the problems like that. And of course, that message couldn't come up in the 15 minutes we were sitting <laughs> chatting before the show started. It, it's funny. Like we, we, we have some sayings around here, which is that, uh, yeah, you know, fa fail harder. I uh, know Thomas Christ has got a song called Fail Harder. <laughs> and it's like, just means that sometimes you just got to fail and just accept it. Uh, and mistakes make you better, uh, which exactly. is something that, that Jane often says. And you know what? Things happen. And, and I was saying, uh, I'll share this story because it'll make you feel better and about the fact that things. Uh, one of Randy's friends was was looking at the thumbnail and they were like, uh, Randy, is there any reason? Is it, Maybe it's deliberate, but the word chaos, is it supposed to be spelled C-H-O-A-S? Shouldn't it be A-O? Uh, and we may have just uh, corrected that thumbnail five minutes before <laughs> the show. So all the promotion through the week, uh, and I didn't notice it, Randy didn't notice I didn't. it, no one else noticed it, we had chaos spelt wrong. So, uh, and I think it makes sense that we've had chaos in the thumbnail. We've now had a slightly chaotic power situation, but now we're ready to move on and to keep yeah, going, we're ready. which is the main thing. So, uh, 
what? So obviously you're using your Native American flute. Now, as someone who knows nothing about the Native American flute, mm-hmm. um, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that as well. But the best sure. thing for folks to do is to to check out the links down below and go and listen to it. As soon as you hear it the first time, you'll be like, oh, yes, I've heard this. I know this. I know that was the way that I reacted. Because, yeah, just think of like that beautiful sleep meditation type music. That exactly. Is just real exactly. musical soundscapes you're going to be hearing Native American flute in a lot of that music. So uh, yep. it, it is great stuff to listen to. So what do you, pro- you, you talked us through that you used to use sonar back in the days. You've now right. moved into garage band. What are you primarily using to record your music right now or all that over that five months where you recorded your latest album? I was, I actually was just using garage band and some of the equipment that you recommended that I get like yep. the powered hub and you know the correct cables all of that i already had a yep. an S, a shore sm58 microphone that i use live and that wow. works works fine with with the um with the flutes mm-hmm. and basically used all of the input that you provide uh in your videos and sort of went from there and every time i got hung up on something i went back to one of your videos and said okay i forget how to do this and watch the video went, Oh, okay. And then went back and used it. And so, you know, it was, it was sort of, um, the whole thing was a learning process because I was changing basic style of music. I was going to new age rather than traditional Mm -hmm. and had to learn all the nuances of the program, uh, as I was going along and, you know, I, I went with garage band one because I don't have a whole lot of room in the RV for a bunch of gear and it's free and being somebody who's, you know, technically challenged when it comes to anything digital, I found it relatively simple to use. So, you know, I basically was a beginner in, in all respects and learned as I was going along, uh, and tried to keep it, keep it as simple as possible because you can go down a rabbit hole pretty easy with effects and compression and all of that. And you end up with a muddy mess. It's so true. And uh, it's a really familiar tale because I know a lot of, I I was exactly the same. So I'd recorded using other platforms in the past that recorded in studios and and done live performance and that sort of thing. And then kind of had a hiatus for about 20 years while I, you know, had a family and uh, Mm -hmm. paid the bills and did all those things and then came back to it. But when I came back, it was like my, my 30, 40 year old brain couldn't really comprehend a lot of the, uh, the, the technology that was needed to set things up. And then I'm like, Oh, garage band, hang on. It's, It's here on my phone. It's here on my iPad, that looks like a simple way to just plug in, hit record, and then create sounds. And and you've created a really beautiful album using the Thank sounds you. in GarageBand and recording, and the, the recordings you're getting on your flutes sound amazing as well, and it just all glues together really well. So, uh, yeah, if I can say, if I had any part in that, if anything that I put out there uh, helped you create that, then then that's amazing. And, and it's had quite a good reception to the, the album that you've released as well. It, so, it uh, definitely has. It, it definitely surprised me how how well it came out um Mm. you know in all honesty the mixing was probably the most difficult part of the whole project because every time i mixed using a different format went from headphones then to speakers in one room then to speakers in another room then my car speakers Mm -hmm. it was always different and it got frustrating and i ended up going with the mixes that i heard in my headphones And it ended up translating, ultimately translating well every place else. Yeah. And that's a really good point to make. And it's something I think that a lot of folks miss. You can, you can go too far with that. I've always said that you're doing the car test and doing the Bluetooth speaker test and listening on monitor speakers is good. Uh, But yeah, you can, you can go nuts with it. You can actually spend too much time on that and and really just paring it down and working out. It's never going to be perfect on every platform. And right. uh, you know, p- perfection is, is nothing, is something you're never going to actually achieve. But if you can get it sounding the best it can, and sometimes you'll need to make some compromises, you'll need to, uh, you know, sacrifice a little bit of bass to add a little bit of clarity. And it really depends on the music and what it actually needs. But exactly. uh, yeah, you've, uh, you've done a great job mixing, mixing and mastering that. So in terms of the gear you're using, so SM58 into uh, an iPad, is it that you're using? Yeah, for, so I have an recording? older model iPad Pro, yep. um, which works fine. Um, I don't 
can, you know, I don't see myself moving up to anything else until this one won't do what I want it to do. Yeah. Uh, I'm not somebody who buys gear just because it just came out and it's the latest and greatest. If what I'm using works, I yep. stay with it till it doesn't work anymore. Then I get something else. Spot on. Yeah. And, and I think that's, that's something that's so important because, uh, you know, so many of us, myself included, yeah, you do get a little bit blind to that. You're like, what's the next piece of gear or the next plugin or the next <laughs> bit of software that I can use that's going to uh, improve my sound, whereas really it's, it's about getting the best performance and the best uh, type of uh, music at the, uh, at the source, getting it right at the source, right. really. I, I do like the UR12, the Steinberg. Yeah. Great piece of gear, not very expensive, but it works as advertised and it, it's easy to figure out how to use, so... Yeah, I highly uh, recommend that. Yeah, and uh, as as many folks here know, that the, the, there's three things that if, if you if you try to set up your your home studio and your mobile studio, yeah, a, a good quality interface. And I use the Steinberg UR series, and and uh, it sounds like you're getting good results from that. And then your uh, Lightning to USB three adapter and your powered USB hub, because uh, right. that's that's the backbone of your gear. Everything from there is like a nice to have. They're the must haves to uh, to get yourself a good quality recording. And uh, yeah, uh, uh, we do. I do have a gear guide here. I don't, usually don't. Uh, I, I I don't promote the sort of things that we have around here but yeah you can you can look in the usual places if you want to check that out um right. so what uh, what made you choose a particular sort of style of music because you said that you moved from more traditional music to i guess more of the new age music in mm -hmm. your most recent album what was it that made you make that transition that said hey i want to do something that's you know got some pads behind it that's more of this new age style i think what it came down to pete was we're I started working on this project uh, in the early days of the pandemic here in the United States in March. And, you know, I, I knew what kind of stress my wife and I were under living in an RV, stuck in an RV park in Tennessee, not mm -hmm. being able to really go anywhere because it wasn't safe to. And so I decided I, you know, was going to use that time to create something that, uh, would help people relax and allow them to sort of get away from the chaos and the stress uh, of the whole pandemic. And nothing works better than the soothing sound of Native American flute and the new age style of background that goes, that goes along with it. And I've always sort of liked the new age style of music. <clears throat> just because it is so relaxing. Uh, the only the only thing that I found that has New Age has a shortcoming is that the music tends to get so wrapped up in the acoustic palette and blending sounds and emotional stuff together that once the song's over, you can't remember any melody that Ooh. you heard because it was all this blending of great acoustics. So... I wanted to make stuff, uh, songs that had a new age feel to it, but had melodies that once the song was over, that melody was still stuck in people's heads. And that was sort of the goal of this album. Yeah. No, and it's definitely worked because it's one thing that I did notice listening to this because uh, you know, when I chat to someone, I go back through the catalog and I listen to something from a while ago and then something more recent. And yeah, you can definitely hear that that's something that you've embraced and, and being able to have, and I guess using a, 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 a mono instrument, so to speak, one that you can only play one, uh, one sound at a time, really right. does help ensure that you are actually driving some melodies throughout that. So it's not like you say, just a whole lot of harmonics and, and a whole lot of acoustic sounds you've actually got that melody running through which means you get to the end of a track and like you say it's more memorable whereas uh, i think some albums i've listened to not to be critical but some more new age music albums you listen to the album and yeah you can't really you come away with nothing you might feel nice and relaxed but mm -hmm. you're not sort of whistling any melodies to you in your head so uh yeah it's uh it, it is it is amazing and you, you talked there, you've sort of touched on it a couple of times and we kind of buried the lead on this one, but you are mobile and have been since 2019. So you and your wife are living, if, correct me if I'm wrong on this, but you're living in your RV. You've been traveling around uh, around the United States and a lot of the videos on your channel are you playing the flute in a whole bunch of amazing uh, scenic locations. And I believe uh, your wonderful wife, who's uh, who was your tech support a few moments ago, uh, <laughs> does all the photography and all the videography and puts together all of the these wonderful, 
sort of landscape imagery to go with the soundscapes you're creating, yeah? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, we, we're avid backpackers and hikers, and every time we go out somewhere into a national park or state park, uh, I'll take a flute with me, and she brings whatever, you know, photographic and video equipment she wants to bring with her. Uh, a lot of the videos that she does, quite frankly, she uses her iPhone, mm. um, one of the newer models with the three cameras in it. Uh, yeah. Some of the more intricate stuff, the the longer videos where my music is the background and they run, you know, five and six minutes long are collages of her photos that she's taken with her high end uh, digital cameras. But yeah, and we, we now have a uh, wireless microphone that I can clip onto my shirt so I can be anywhere up to, you know, 25 or 30 feet away from where she is. Mm. And she has a gimbal. For those of you who don't know what a gimbal is, it's a pretty cool device that you mount your phone or camera on. And it hold, no matter what you do, it holds the camera level. So she can actually pan or walk toward me while I'm playing and the camera is perfectly level. And so she records now. So we're, we're, we're totally wireless at this point, um, yeah. which really makes things a lot easier. Absolutely. Sorry, I was, I was getting distracted here because I'm just getting jealous looking at all the uh, amazing scenery that uh, <laughs> that are in some of your more recent videos. So, uh, and it is, it's it's a treasure trove of uh, of, of scenic uh, as well as auditory stuff. And I was that was my next question is to say because the audio quality you're getting in these videos uh, for anyone who's tried to video outside using any sort of microphone or a built-in microphone in cameras or in phones, the wind can hit you, the background right. noise. You, you're not getting that clarity. Whereas I'm watching these videos, going, wow, you're getting some amazing clarity of the sound with enough of the ambience but without the ambience overpowering it so right uh, yeah it's uh, it's amazing i mean this is the creator series and we normally talk music but the music and the video together just create this uh, this great package which is is amazing stuff to watch thank you uh, so, uh, we've talked a little bit about the sort of the hardware and the software and the, and the tools and, and that sort of thing. So, uh, you talked about the Steinberg UR12 as being the audio interface and the Shure SM58, which is a highly underrated microphone. I know a lot of people oh, look yeah. to buy the more expensive condenser mics and things, but just seriously, an SM57 or 58 and the quality you get from that clarity of the signal through one of those... It, it, it does the job for most people most times. Are there any other favorite tools, any other bits of hardware or things that you use, I guess, as a creator and a mobile creator that you rely on that help you get the job done? Um, I don't have a whole lot of recording gear um, that I use. I have a bunch of live performance equipment in the bays under our motorhome when we get back to being able to do live performances again. So I have speakers and yeah. we have a six foot projection screen that we use to project oh, wow. my wife's photos behind me while I'm playing, uh, that type of thing. But I keep the recording aspect of it pretty simple. I don't get into a lot of outboard gear and stuff. Um, I use pretty much what's available uh, that works with GarageBand. I think the only it was only two other apps that I added to GarageBand when I was working on this project. One was the wider app, yeah. which for what I was doing, just opened up a whole new world of what I was capable of doing with being able to place the instruments where I wanted them in the stereo mm -hmm. field and pull yeah. the, the flute into the center. And the other one was, since I'm old school, I, you know, used old school analog, <clears throat> excuse me, EQs. I went online and found a, a 16 band uh, graphic EQ and yep. used that just to, to tweak some of the high frequencies uh, out of some of the higher flutes, uh, at, which worked really well for me. I only used the, the one EQ that comes with um, with GarageBand as the final thing in my signal chain if and I use it primarily for more volume or less volume for the whole thing if I needed it. Yeah. 
No, and that, it's so good to hear that because, again, I, I talk to a lot of folks and, and I think all of us can get very tempted by all the different plugins that you get. And there are some amazing plugins that work really well for different types of music. So uh, there's definitely a lot of good stuff out there. But I think 80% of a good mix is around volume and, and stereo balance. So just having a balanced mix, and they used to call mix engineers balance engineers because it was literally right. just balancing your different sounds across the stereo, stereo spectrum, but balancing the audio levels as well so using a plugin like wider and using an eq just to make sure because remember wider is basically just the volume of where you're putting it in your stereo spectrum right and eq is just the volume of different frequencies so right. getting all that volume stuff right up front that can be the difference between a great mix and a mix that you're constantly trying to just throw plugins at to fix after the fact you really want to get it right up the front so and yeah. you can hear that in the clarity of your mixes you've got in garage band you can really hear that coming through so thank uh, you that is great to have. As, uh, as Thomas Christ says here, uh, yeah, Wider is a great tool to have in the toolbox. Best stereo width plugin, no question. And it is indeed free. So for any creators out there that are using it, it's available on uh, Mac, I believe, even on PC. There's, uh, there's a version, but uh, there's the iOS version that is 100% free. And uh, yeah, you get stu stereo effects without all those phase issues that you can get with, uh, with some other plugins. So well worth a look. Uh, hello to uh, everyone who's here live, by the way. We got so busy just chatting for the 25 minutes uh, that uh, we haven't even said hello to the folks here live. So Thomas Christ, <laughs> our uh, wonderful moderator here. Uh, Evan says, I played North American flute for 20 years and uh, come from the era of Glenn Velez and Carlos Nakai in the 90s mm. and love what you're doing. So there you go. Uh, Thank you, Evan. Fretless, uh, fretless bass. So uh, our friend uh, Fred over there, uh, who's the the uh, admin of the iPhone Musician Group on Facebook, by the way. Ah. Uh, so shout out to uh, to Fred. Uh, Ed Ezekiel's here. Doctor Zorders is here. We've got Mister Mark Bro. Uh, I'm sure I've missed a bunch of people. Joe Glenn, hello to you on tap. We've got here. Uh, this is someone you may know. George is in the chat here saying hello. Uh, uh, after that's, sleep or away. <laughs> yeah, that's my technical expert. <laughs> that's te technical supervisor. Of, uh, of the wind talker experience is Georgia. Uh, and uh, yes, the thumbnail just did say COAS in it. We've changed it. It may not have updated in some of your, in uh, some of your views. Uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be fun it's gonna be fun uh all right we're gonna continue on here I, I did say to randy i'm like we try to go 30 minutes but i got a 10 minute buffer up my sleeve and we're definitely gonna have to use it here today because uh, it's too interesting uh chatting about these sort of things so of, of the uh so obviously interesting timing for for deciding to go mobile in 2019 and as you said you were kind of a little bit stranded for those five months but the the end result the benefit was this wonderful album that you've produced there what would you say if you had to i didn't even have this in the questions but i'm just thinking out loud now What's been probably the best thing about living mobile and creating while on the go? And what do you think is the most challenging thing that you've come across? Oh, I think other than doing the live recordings that we do when we're hiking, uh, trying to do any work in the RV, um, you know, for me requires time and a quiet environment and trying to carve out a large enough block of time to work in the RV in my quote studio um, <laughs> is difficult. Um, you know, the fact that we were stuck for five months, I, that's all I had time. That's all I did was yeah. work on the album. Uh, we couldn't go many places. Yeah. Uh, but one of the benefits of being able to travel is that you get to see some remarkable places that inspire yeah. musical compositions and especially with the native american flute which is such an expressive instrument all on its own uh, you can literally describe a location with what mm. you're playing on the flute and people yeah. will get it and they'll go oh yeah that music definitely goes with what you're showing me and i can feel that location in what i'm hearing so that's probably the biggest upside is being able to get to places that a lot of people may never get to and be able to uh, show them those places with a musical soundtrack that enhances that experience. Yeah. 
No, that's a, a amazing and, and a really good point because I think one of the challenges, and a lot of people can probably relate to that because I know a lot of people released their first EP or their first album or some even their very first song during the last sort of year and a half because mm -hmm. they haven't been able to go anywhere and a lot right. of people have taken up home recording as a hobby, which has been amazing. Like if you look at, if you want to look at the downside of things, obviously there's been some challenges, I'm not going to downplay that, but the positives have been that folks have finally had the time to sit down and go, oh, actually this is something I've always wanted to do. I'm going to sit down and do it. And, and and for you to be able to discover GarageBand and the fact that, hey, I don't need a big studio. I don't need a whole lot of complicated gear. I can actually get an amazing sound from an iPad and an SM58 and then just use GarageBand to, to pad it out. I think that's amazing and it's a good thing. And you, you've got the added advantage of being inspired by this thing. Because I think the reason that a lot of people had songs about being in lockdown over the last year is that they haven't been able to do anything else. And a lot of what we create music about is the experiences that we're having. And if your experience right. is the fact that you haven't been able to go anywhere, a lot of people are writing songs about not being able to go anywhere, which is, uh, has been interesting to see. But uh, yeah, gr great to see. And, and for my folks over in the US and the UK, who I know have had a rough time over the last sort of uh, 18 months things seem to be improving you're coming into summer now and there's a lot more uh, being able to get out and about and see each other and, and experience more so uh, right. i do i do i'm thankful to see that and uh, hopefully everyone gets out there and travels and uh, and does some cool things and creates some cool music on the back of it uh, yeah i have to agree with you i think one of the the biggest things that came out of this whole pandemic was the amount of music new music mm. that came out during that period uh, One World Music Radio, where I have my stuff played a lot, uh, they couldn't keep up mm. with the amount of music they were receiving from people who wanted airtime. It was yeah. amazing. Yeah, it's, it's, it is. And I know personally that I started the show uh, about a year ago called uh, Your Music Live. And uh, yeah, I've, I've been inundated. Yeah. It started really small and now I get maybe 50, 60 different songs from different people every week. And I'm having wow. to, I've am i got a backlog of about four weeks of songs to play <laughs> because I do two hours a week. And I'm like, I can't, <laughs> oh, I'm playing geez. as many songs as I can. And it's uh, it, it's tough to, tough to do, but it's a lovely problem to have. Like more music in the world and because people can create music in their own studios and the, the barrier to entry has been lowered because I right. mean, you and I have come from an era where if you wanted to record something that was high quality, you needed to go to a studio or right. at least have a pretty high end four track recorder. And then you were recording the tape on four tracks and yep. it was a challenge. Now you can sit in your own bedroom in your own home studio and record something that's as good, if not better quality than what we were doing in studios even 10 or 15 years ago. So exactly. it, it, it is an amazing time to be creating music and uh, it is uh, amazing to, to be able to do what we can do here you've had a lot of moments uh since you've been in music i'm sure uh, over time randy is there one that stands out to you as your proudest moment since you started creating music um i would have to say that uh my proudest moment has been uh receiving the award from one world music radio on may 26 when they had their eighth annual awards program uh was to have my album Awakenings be the runner-up for Best Flute Album of 2020. Uh, that, to me, uh, considering where I recorded, the fact that I was using a new platform to record on, uh, and, you know, it was a very low-budget project. Uh, to have it come out the way it did and to get the type of recognition uh, that that album received uh, just blew me away. I still haven't really, really gotten over it. Um, it's just amazing to me that that it was the runner up because there was some, you know, the top 10 people that were up for that award were some of the uh, most well-known internationally recognized flute players uh, that you can name. And I won't name them because unless you're a flute player, you probably won't know who they are. Uh, yeah. But to beat those people out uh, to me was just absolutely humbling. Absolutely yeah. humbling. 
Wonderful. And uh, I'm not playing the music here for because we can't for on this show, but uh, just showing some of the amazing, uh, amazing photos. Uh, and you can just, just have to picture in your head and uh, jump over to Randy's channel and watch these afterwards. But yeah, just some amazing stuff on there uh, and uh, great soundscapes to go along with the landscapes that we have there. Um, yeah, the, it, it is amazing. Uh, there you go. Evan knows all those flute players. Yeah, it's probably like a guitar guys know all the guitarists. Exactly. Sure flute <laughs> players know all the flute players uh, out there. And it's, uh, again, the reason I love doing this show and this series is that I learn from so much. Like I, I knew nothing of the Native American flute. I'd, I'd heard it, but I wouldn't have been able to say, hey, that's what that instrument is. And now every time I'm listening, it's amazing how often I hear it just being used in different music. So uh, yeah, and, and again, for you to create, and again, I don't, I know that GarageBand can do amazing things, but a lot of other people don't. So I'm sure there are people that have come across this and, and when they found out that you created it in an RV in GarageBand, they'll probably be blown away and say, what, you can create that in, in GarageBand? And that, and it, really, that's my hope, uh, you know, mm. that people will hear that and go, well, if he can do that, then I'm going to give this a shot um, because yeah. I didn't think I could do anything of that quality with a free program that works Ooh. off an iPad. I yeah. mean, when I started, I didn't believe it either, but to have all those instruments available to you uh, in that package where you can pick and choose what you want, uh, yeah. absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal program. Indeed. Uh, we've got one more question, but uh, Mark has snuck in a question here. If, if anyone else live does have a question, like I said, we'll, we're going over time. We've got about five minutes that we'll sneak in here. But uh, Mark has asked you, uh, Randy, how do you balance your practice and recording time with personal life in such a tight environment like an RV? What a great question. Um, most of my practice time is done recording, believe it or not, recording those live videos out when we're hiking. All of those songs that I do are totally improvised and, you know, I'll, I'll try a few new things that I haven't tried before, uh, but that's usually my practice time. Um, recording time, I haven't spent a whole lot of time in the RV recording since I finished the album, uh, just because we've been able to move, so we've been moving around. And, um, you know, I do practice once in a while, like our granddaughter has been with us for a week. She's seven years old and she plays the flute already. So she and I play together and I try to teach her a few things. Um, but, you know, my wife has her photography. So when she's at her workstation in the RV, uh, downloading her photos and putting together videos of her photos, uh, that's when I'm working on my music. So there's a balance and there's just the two of us. So uh, if we decide we're going to spend two days in the RV when it's raining, working on mm. music and video, that's what we do. Amazing. Very cool stuff, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it, it, it's it seems like a, a a very good match there to have the uh, the the music and then the video and the and the uh, the photos coming together. And, yeah, it uh, served us well. It's serving yeah. us well. It's a great creative partnership, and it's always amazing to hear when uh, when you're passing on. So I know my kids are very into music, and I've got them helping me with uh, with the production side of the channel here, oh, and cool. as well as uh, as well as into into their own music and, and instruments and singing and things as well. So it's great when it can be passed down through different generations, and and, right. uh, and your experience can then help them. And uh, I can I can only imagine like when your seven year old granddaughter is is seventeen in ten years time, what technology and what amazing platform oh, yeah. you'll have to record on. It'll be uh, you'll be to connect something to your brain and then your, your melodies will flow out or something i don't know is it technology oh, yeah we can only hope <laughs> <laughs> oh very cool um uh, marty's got a question here randy do you use the nature sounds around you or do you add them in post in the mix? that's a good question because you do oh. have a few sort of yep. background ambient sounds are they are they field recordings or do you uh, add them in your mix how do you, how do you well you first of all hi marty uh good to see you're on you're on the show uh the ambient sounds that you hear in those live recordings are all natural. I don't come back and do any any processing of those songs at all. Uh, mm -hmm. All of the processing that is done is on the video end, where my wife edits the front end and the back end of the video and does you know the the, the text and stuff. Uh, but all of those things are natural. Very cool. Yeah, and and again, if you if you haven't been inspired by all of the things that uh, that Randy's talked about here today. 
that's another thing that you can do. Don't don't ever think that you're limited to the sounds that you can create using a synthesizer or using a guitar or using your own voice even. Right. But take your phone. Everyone's got a built-in high-quality audio recorder in their pocket these days. And the microphone on these things is actually pretty good. So even it if is. you don't have a setup and you're hearing something cool, I was out walking yesterday and there was like a creek running by me and I grabbed my phone and I got a cool sample of like a two-minute sample of a creek running. I'm like, I got no idea what I'm going to use this for, but I got it now. And <laughs> and uh, I'm sure I'll put it to use sometime in the future. So uh, there you go. V- very cool. Uh, Dr. Zorda says, awesome, Randy. Great to see you subbed and so looking forward to hearing more. So yes, uh, if you Thanks, do Doc. want to uh, check out uh, Randy Windtalker Motes and uh, all of your music, you can jump down in the description. We've got links down there to a bunch of different places where you can check out uh, the web there. You've got the YouTube channel there, which I do recommend you subscribe to and check out all the different videos and playlists because you got, there's something coming all the time because you're moving around and you're creating these videos and you're always out and about there's always something new to look at and to see there and of course the album which uh, i believe is available on all the different platforms you can stream it, and yes it is that wherever you find yes music. it is yeah in fact everything you see listed there on that here now page are all the platforms that you can stream it or purchase it or you can buy it direct from me if you would like uh, we have a supply here in the rv and we can ship from wherever we are wow there you go. Even, even gone the old school. Even got the physical media. I love it. Excellent stuff. Uh, we've got, uh, there you go, one video coming live tomorrow, says Georgia. So uh, we've yep. got that to look forward to. Excellent stuff. Um, the final question that I ask everyone on this series, uh, because this is really to motivate other people so that they can go, wow, Randy's done amazing things. I want to do amazing things too. What is the one piece of advice that you would pass on to someone who's just getting started in their home recording journey? Get the best gear you can get and keep it simple. Uh, Don't try to cut corners on equipment because it will bite you every time. Uh, And I, Pete and I speak from experience, I'm sure. You know, we've tried the low end stuff, the high end stuff. Uh, The stuff that Pete recommends, the gear that Pete recommends is all high end gear, top of the line stuff that he's checked out. And so, you know, go to his videos. Uh, without his videos, my album would never have gotten off the ground because until you watch his videos and learn how to use the program and learn what you're supposed to be doing, uh, you're lost. You could spend months and months, you know, sort of dancing around that display, figuring out what everything does. So get good gear and use the videos and keep your recording simple if you're first starting out. Don't try to do some, you know, mega thing uh, that you heard. Keep it as simple as you can and work on your chops as time goes on. Excellent advice. And uh, yeah, we, we hear that from a lot of folks, which is that you definitely don't need the absolute thousand dollar top of the line gear. Uh, but yes, going for something that is a little above the budget, because yeah, if you've got a decent quality microphone and a good interface, yeah, you're off to the races. Then it's all right. down to you to, to create and record some some quality music. So uh, yeah, and as, uh, as Randy mentioned there, uh, we've got the gear guide here and that's all stuff that I've used that the community here have used that people have actually checked that works with your iPhone, with your iPad, and that gets you some good quality sound. So excellent advice. Once again, uh, folks can uh, can check out your music, uh, Randy, down in the, the links right here in the description. So I do recommend you go and do that. Uh, any parting words for from you for a wonderful community here? I'll tell you what, this garage band group, the create, record, release people, everybody connected with developing and, and creating music using GarageBand. Great bunch of people, very supportive of each other, which I think is probably the most important thing. Uh, And they give, if you ask them their opinion, they give you an honest answer. Uh, Mm -hmm. Obviously, music is subjective, so somebody out there is never going to like what you do. Uh, But uh, I really, really have benefited from being part of you know, the Studio Live Today community and the Garage Band create, record, uh, release groups. And I highly recommend, you know, if you're just tuning in for the first time, uh, 
join those groups, uh, join the Facebook, Pete's Facebook pages, because uh, there's a wealth of information and training there that you will definitely benefit from. Excellent stuff. Thank you for that. And uh, yeah, I do appreciate it. And yeah, if you, if you do want to join that, it's just createrecordrelease.com. That'll take you straight over to the Facebook group. And uh, yeah, we've got nearly 900 people, amazing people in that community that really do help each other out and uh, and do good things. There you go. Thomas Christ never, never gets a day off Thomas Christ. Always there in the, uh, in the chat doing the, uh, doing the, the moderation duties. So thank you for that. Uh, and thank you to you, uh, to Randy Wintalker Motes for, for being here on the show. Uh, as we say at the end of every show, um, it's really important that you be kind to yourself and uh, the best way you can be kind to yourself is to go and listen to Awakening End to End. You'll feel so smooth, soothed and happy after that that uh, it's the best thing you can do. And then share it with others because it's a, it's a good idea to be kind to others. Keep creating, folks. Uh, thanks for being here. Thanks to those that are here live. If you're catching on the replay and you've got questions or comments, drop those down in the comments below and I'm sure Randy and myself will be back to answer any follow-up questions you may have. Thank you again, Randy. Been Thank you for having me on, Pete. This has been great. Cheers. Thanks, folks. See you.